Hello and good morning everyone. So today we will be uh, moving towards our next chapter that is the chapter 2 of this Kaplan uh, immunological section where, where we are trying to build the concept of immunology. So initially we have discussed about this immunological that uh, first chapter where we have discussed about this innate immunity, adaptive immunity, how this physiological and anatomical barrier is bridged, then the immune system like granulocyte and uh, phagocytic cells come into the action, if reached to the blood, then complement pathway activate and then try to kill, eliminate the organism from your body by innate immune re response itself. If they are not able to handle, then they will release the signals, the cytokines and goes and activate this T lymphocyte. This T lymphocyte would release the cytokines. They will activate the B lymphocyte and form the convert into the plasma cell, form antibody and this antibody again help so again, there is a classical complement pathway will activate it also and in increase the killing of the pathogen biopsinization. And finally, clean, uh, clear all this immune complexes and seizes all the inflammation. So in this way, they by together helps to clear the infection, which was the concept, the whole concept of the immunology. Now let's move forward to understand each and every step. And when we are moving forward to our the next chapter, that is the onto journey of the immune cells where we'll learn some of the points like information related to the origin and function of the cell of the immune system so which is very important sometime in usmle they will ask you about the immune cell they can give you the name sometimes they will give only you the picture and then let you to understand what you what you understand that or you recognize that cell or not Sometimes they can even do not give the name or picture, but they will mention the surface marker. And the surface marker are unique for every immune cell. So in, on the basis of that also, we can recognize the cell. So we need to un understand what are the cells, what the cells look like, and what are the surface marker. So this is the three important thing that we need to take home, take home message from this lecture. Okay, then also there are certain points like how where from they are they have been originated, how this hemopoiesis has been taken place. This all we'll discuss. Okay, so talking about the origin of this all the cells, immune cells originator, hemopoiesis initially involves the production, development, differentiation, and maturation of the blood cell that is the erythrocyte, megakaryocyte, leukocyte from the multipotent stem cell. So that is important. It is the multipotent stem cell, and that is the you have to understand. So the source of everything become, comes from this multipotent stem cell that is important point the site of hematosis change hemopoiesis uh, change during development so it changes according to the development during early embryogenesis yolk sac was the site of this whole cell then it shifts to the liver and spleen so you can see this they can shift to the liver and spleen and finally they can shift to the bone marrow so this distal lung bones so there are the you have to understand during embryogenesis fetal development the yolk sac is the site of the hemopoiesis then they goes to the then organogenesis begin and after organization of hemopoiesis shift to the liver and spleen so liver and spleen is the target when the organogenesis occur this is also a, now in the fetus life but when they born or say uh, they mature or bone marrow develop then finally they shift to the bone marrow where they remain throughout the adulthood. So they remain throughout the adulthood is this bone marrow. So that is important. Okay. So again, I'll repeat the yolk sac is the first initial development of this hemopoistic cell. Then they shift to the liver and spleen and finally to the long distal bone. So if you're talking about adult UNB, then obviously long distal bones are the site where these cells are getting produced. These are the factory house for all of the cells that we are getting produced so after knowing that we have to come to that multipotent stem cell which we are talking about this multipotent stem cell cell found in the bone marrow this multipotent stem cell that is found in the bone marrow have the ability to undergo asymmetric division means they can divide into two phase into two uh, two branches so in a two direction in a asymmetrically that is one of the two daughter cell were served to renew the population of the stem cell that is self renew renewal while other can give rise to a common lymphoid progenitor cell or common myeloid, myeloid progenitor cell. So this uh, lymphoid and myeloid progenitor cell is actually important. So there are population of cell that can also go self re renewal while other can give rise to this two type of cell that is pro lymphoid progenitor cell and myeloid, myeloid progenitor cell. So this helps this common lymphoid progenitor cell and common myeloid progenitor cell helps to give they produce the cell like lymphoid this progenitor cell give rise to this B lymphocyte 
T lymphocyte and natural killer cell. So you have to understand they are, are the this multipotent stem cell give rise to the common lymphoid progenitor and common myeloid progenitor cell. From lymphoid progenitor we can get this, this B lymphocyte, T lymphocyte and obviously natural killer cell. So three, three lymphocytes has been released from this lymphoid progenitor cell whereas myeloid progenitor cell give rise to the, all those cells like it gave rise to erythrocyte, it gives rise to megacyte, megakaryocyte, that is the platelets, it gives rise to the mast cell, eosinophil, basophil, neutrophil, macrophages and monocyte and dendritic cell. So there are the two pathways, two different branches, two different way whereby which this uh, common lymphoid progenitor cell and myeloid progenitor cell originate and they actually give to the all the immune cells, cells that we are we are going to study or that is present in our body. So that is one is, is to remember lymphoid progenitor that is the common lymphoid progenitor and other is common myeloid progenitor. So talking about their function, the white blood cell of both the myeloid and lymphoid stem cells have a special function in the body once they differentiate in the bone marrow and completed cells of the myeloid lineage except the erythrocyte and microcyte carocyte for from the non-specific stereotype response and member of the innate branch of the immune response. So the thing is that they are, they are telling us that there are the cells that have non-specific action of the innate, innate immune system or say in the myeloid lineage except the erythrocyte and megakaryocyte. So except this erythrocyte and megakaryocyte other will have non-specific response. But this B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte, this B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte of the lymphoid lineage perform the focus antigen specific role in the immunity. We have already discussed the innate Im Im immune response that is the part of the immune system, innate immune system are non-specific whereas that out of the adaptive immune system are specific mainly we are talking about this lymphocyte which is responsible for adaptive immune risk, acquired immune system or adaptive immune system. Although we have talked initially this, uh, we have talked initially about this um, NK cell, this natural killer cell. So this natural killer cell actually are the part of the innate, innate immunity, although they are being released from the lymphoid progenitor cell. So you, you can say, okay, lymphoid cell, we, we are always thinking about the acquired immunity. Yes, lymphoid T cell and B cell are part of the acquired immunity, but this natural killer cell, NK cell are the part of the innate immunity that you have to understand. So although B and T lymphocyte in the bloodstream are almost morphological indistinguishable at the light microscope level, they represent two interdependent B cell and lies. So this T cell and B cell which are the part of the acquired immunity which will come from the common lymphoid progenitor, they actually look alike the same in case in the light microscope although they have the different function they arise from the different places like this B lymphocyte comes from the bone marrow and then complete their development in the bone marrow itself but talking about the T lymphocyte they leave the bone marrow undergo development within the thymus so the problem is that when bone marrow is developed the bone marrow what happened B lymphocyte remain in the bone marrow to complete their development so, but T lymphocyte first originate from the bone marrow then goes to the thymus and then get converted into the T. So you have to understand B4, B lymphocyte is for bone marrow then T lymphocyte is for thymus, T for T you have to understand. Although B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte both production house is bone marrow but B lymphocyte mature within the bone marrow and come into the peripheral circulation but T lymphocyte leave the bone marrow goes under the development and mature into the thymus. So, in thymus, T lymphocyte mature and form this T lymphocyte. So, so you have to understand thymus maturation site is for T lymphocyte. Both T, B and T lymphocyte have surface membrane receptor designed to bind to the specific antigen and we will discuss this and receptor into the later chapter. The natural killer cell, now the natural killer cell which is one of the lymphocyte actually we are thinking which are generated from the common lymphoid progenitor cell. This third type of immunocyte is a large granular lymphocyte that recognizes tumor and virally infected cell through non-specific binding. So what are the your part of your immune system that acts against the intracellular organism, the tumor cell and the virally infected cell and that is actually this natural killer cell. So natural killer cell help in kill, recognize, kill the tumor cell and virus infect intracellular organism. It can be a bacteria as well but you have to understand intracellularly mainly viral infected cell and tumor cell is killed by this natural killer cell and these are the part of their innate immune system. So let's see this structure, I'll a little less focus it. Okay, so we can see over here. You can see this is your, you can see uh, 
this is your multipotent stem cell from here two direction in two direction one direction and two direction one and two so in two direction there is a differentiation of the cell this is the common lymphoid progenitor cell this is common myeloid uh, progenitor cell the lymphoid progenitor from here the lymphoid progenitor cell differentiated by this by this cytokine and this is interleukin 7 if you remember 7 if you write 7 as opposite it become l so l for lymphoid this is way to remember only so this 7 which is written if you opposite downward then it will appears as the l so you have to understand this is the l so it lymphoid is stem cell you will come out after giving the exposure of interleukin 7 so when interleukin 7 act on this multi multipotent this multi multipotent stem cell you can say then this multipotent stem cell will convert by interleukin 7 will convert into the lymphoid progenitor cell similarly if this multipotent stem cell will act by the immuno that's interleukin 3 you can 3 3 which can report is that opposite this is the 3 as actually if you write it downward so it appear as the m so m just it is just a way to remember it is a my way to remember it has nothing scientifically proved i am just trying to make correlate so that you can you can remember interleukin 3 give rise to the myeloid stem cell interleukin 7 that appears as the l give rise to the lymphoid progenitor cell that you have to understand from lymphoid progenitor cell there are the t cell and b cell will come b cell will in the bone marrow convert into the b lymphocyte and if you activate it they will convert the plasma cell and release this antibody similarly t cell will t progenitor cell that will convert goes into the thymus and thymus they will release the helper t cell and cytotoxic t cell so cd4 and cd8 will be released so and another cell that is released is nk cell so from lymphoid progenitor cell lymphocyte will be released that is t cell and b cell t cell will go to the thymus and mature and convert into that CD4 and CD8 that is helper T cell and cytotoxic T cell. So there are two type of T cell. B cell will go into the bone marrow, convert into the B lymphocyte and come to the very small smear, smear and if activated, convert into the plasma cell. So these are the way of dealing, way of forming the cell. And there is the one another lymphocyte-like cell that is natural killer cell, which is not the part of the this lymphoid uh, system. They do not take part in the acquired immunity. They are actually part of the innate immunity. Similarly, there is a multipotent stem cell that converted by the interleukin 3 and also this GMCSF. So that is also important. GMCSF is actually, uh, this is also very much important because this GMCSF is a, one of the thing that helps in the, what, this is the uh, granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor. So this helps in the synthesis when we give a, a plasia patient or cancer patient this um, this stimulation will help in the formation of this phagocytic cell, this myeloid stem cell and then will, they will lead to the formation of your cell. So coming to the myeloid stem cell, the myeloid stem cell will help in the formation of this granulocyte monocyte progenitor which will help in develop of the monocyte which is the kidney bean cell, then this is the neutrophil, okay and from here dendritic cell. This granulocyte monocyte is monocyte will form, monocyte will go, is a, in blood is monocyte, in the peripheral tissue it is a macrophage. From here granulocyte that is neutrophil is formed and also dendritic cell is formed. From interleukin 5 that you can remember as E is the fifth letter of ABCD. So interleukin 5 then eosinophil is formed, eosinophil is converted into the eosinophil, there is a bilobe nucleus which has the pink uh, granules. Then from the there basophil will form, basophil will form basophil progenitor that is basophil and it's also also from basophil, basophil progenitor this mast cell will form and basophil will form. From here the megakaryocyte that it is the uh, will form that will lead to this platelet and they also will uh, help in the formation of this erythroid progenitor that will fall in the erythrocyte or RBC. So all this immune cell that you see in a complete blood count that is the a lymphocyte, neutrophil, mac, mac, that's monocyte, eosinophil, basophil, these all are the, you know how they are originating. They are originating from the multipotent stem cell. They have the two branches. One is the common lymphoid stem cell that will help in the formation of this B, T lymphocyte and as well as natural killer cell. From here, interleukin 3 will act that appears as the M, myeloid stem cell, common myeloid stem cell progenitor from here. There is the, appears the erythroid progenitor that is RBC, megakaryot, thrombopoietin protein act as a megakaryocyte that is a platelet. Then basophil progenitor, basophil, that is the mast cell, eosinophil progenitor, eosinophil. Then there is a granulocyte monocyte progenitor that help in the formation of this monocyte and neutrophil. Monocyte will is the 
in the blood is monocyte in the periphery it becomes the macrophage this is the same cell and again neutrophil is granulocyte they also help in the formation of dendritic cell as well so we have came to know the origin how they came what are the uh, this interleukins that is stimulating the main multibody stem cell and leads to the formation of which arm that we have to understand let's move forward so hope you have understood this uh, all this multipotent stem cell t and b cell and k cell these are from the lymphoid stem cell and myeloid we have this neutrophil monocyte eosinophil basophil platelets and rbc now let's come to the some of the features some of their characteristics okay so white blood cell white blood cell order is based on the relative percentage as they appear in the blood so the most abundant is neutrophil what is neutrophil neutrophil come from the your gran monocyte granulocyte progenitor which has come from the myeloid progenitor myeloid progenitor has come from the you can use this uh, where, where this neutrophil has come from the granulocyte monocyte progenitor this has come from the myeloid stem cell progenitor this has come from the multipotent stem cell so you have to understand all in this way so this neutrophil which is a multi multi neutrophil or polymorphonuclear cell it is called polymorphonuclear because it has a multiple nucleus so this is the cell having multiple nucleus most abundant circulating in the blood granulocyte with the segment lobular nuclei three to five lobes will be there so that is also important they will have this three to five lobes that is also known and has a small pink cytoplasmic granules so a cell cutting multiple nucleus three to five lobes with a small cytoplasmic nucleus is called is your neutrophil that is the that is the actually phagocytic cell phagocytic activity aim to kill extracellular pathogen so these are the pathogen that kill the extracellular cell extracellular bacteria extracellular organism that you have to understand okay now coming to the if you can recognize this neutrophil or say poly pmn the polymorphonuclear cell which is a three to five lower segmented lobular lobular nuclei with a small pink cytoplasmic granules and they help their function is to kill the for pathogenesis phagocytic cell they have they are phagocytic activity killing the extracellular pathogen then coming to the lymphocyte lymphocyte looks like if you see the cell this is the cell with a big nucleus and a small rim of the cytoplasm so it is present in the bloodstream secondary lymphoid tissue and secondary lymphoid tissue they are present usually large dark staining nucleus with a thin rim of cytoplasm so there are big nucleus but thin rim of cytoplasm their surface marker which is actually important now so their surface mar marker B lymphocyte if you are talking about then there is a CD19, CD20 and CD21. So you have to remember this, remember this, remember this. This is CD19, CD20 and CD21 is the surface marker of your B lymphocyte. If you talk about the T lymphocyte, in the T lymphocyte there is a surface marker called CD3. So all, both, T, we know the T lymphocyte, there are two types of lim T lymphocyte that this T lymphocyte actually has T, helper T cell and cytotoxic T cell but this both T cell has this CD3 marker so this, all, this is also important let me again come back to you so this is very important actually so you have to remember every time all T lymphocyte is two type CD4 and CD8 so both have, will have this CD3 marker in addition if you come to the CD4 only there will be CD3 plus CD4 if you are talking about the CD8 cell there will be CD3 plus CD8 marker so CD3 is a common among the lymphocyte and if it is CD4, there will be additionally CD4. If it is CD8, 